there is a view among some glib right-wing monkeys in the southeast of England that the residents of this beautiful town should somehow decamp and get the hell out and move to places where there is more work and perhaps live in holes in the ground near Horsham or Guildford or, or the City of London uh, where they will then be able to uh, earn a crust. Now that we no longer wish them to earn a crust in this place uh, which at one point provided almost a quarter of Britain's GDP by itself. In 1991 I did it. Um, I had to go to London. Um, there was nothing here. Um, I mean, there is, there is jobs elsewhere in the country. I mean, it makes sense if you're prepared to relocate and, and start fresh. But you find a lot of people here have families and commitments, and it's just, it's just not viable. Um, families and commitments yeah. and rents of 60 quid a week yeah. compared to what they're going to have uh, to pay when they get down to London. Exactly. I mean, this £400 uh, housing benefit thing in Kensington, you can, you can pay that a month and get three-bedroom house around here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, you look through the local paper and there are one or two jobs going in the retail sector because not all of the shops have closed down. And there's a few jobs too, canvassing, which means going from door to door, selling things that nobody could possibly want to people who haven't got the money to pay for it either. Yeah, Mills was s as a town like yeah. Why? Bed, no jobs. <laughs> no jobs, nothing Why to do around here, no activities to do. It's just a lot of chavs and a lot of people who have got no jobs bumming about doing nothing with their day. Have you got a job? Nope. What, what, what do you fancy doing? I mean, anything, anything, part time job, just any job really. Just while I'm at college to make myself a bit of money. If they can't get a job, then it's not their fault if they're looking for one, but if they're not looking for one, then it is their fault. Do you think quite a few aren't really looking for one? I would say so, yeah. Do you think the Poles are to blame partly, do you? Well, are there well, many here? I don't know. I've not heard a single Polish voice since I've been here. No, there's a few I thought they'd all here, gone right? home. They're all at work. Are they? Yeah. They're all <laughs> at work. Let's take this on a long way. This is apparently the top. Oh, we're not that far away then, Yeah, we've we? come all the way from... Yeah, all right. So we stay on this path. Yeah? Yeah, I do. This, this round of public spending cuts looks pretty cataclysmic for the town, doesn't it? I think cataclysmic is, is possibly a bit strong, but it could be if we can't take measures to try and keep going in this climate. I mean, you look, you look at across at uh, Boho, we, we, we've encouraged through public expenditure, Digital City there, which is creating jobs, some of which are already turning over in excess of half a million pounds. That's the way forward to, to create the new entrepreneurs to move out of the, out of the uh, traditional industries and into modern industries. But of course, it was public money that kick-started that, and cutting off public money is, is going to slow that down. Are you filming me? <laughs> you utter <laughs> We employ four people at the moment. Um, we're hoping to grow our team to about 15, 20 people over the next two years. Um, we feel that this is a time to be bold um, and not be too cautious. If you're cautious, you'll end up out of business. But we're looking for other parts of the country to engage with the North, e North East in terms of other private sector uh, companies investing uh, invest in, in infrastructure and people and, and really uh, taking the North East on as like a hub of like technology um, because we are very well placed with the universities up here to have like world class companies who can deliver these next generation solutions um, across the private sector. If that film comes out and I look like a 90 year old falling down the hill. Good, I suppose some would say if, if the proportion of public sector jobs in, in, in the borough was less than it is at the moment, if there was a, if there was a bigger take-up of private sector jobs. 
I think I think nobody would disagree with that. But if that was going to happen, it would have happened organically anyway, wouldn't it? The the burgeoning private sector would have moved in and taken over the public sector jobs. The argument has been is almost as if the public sector jobs don't have value and private se sector jobs do, and that simply isn't true. Did you get that? You're a <laughs> sucking. <laughs> I'm not moving until you turn that <laughs> off. I don't think it's a risk to do business uh, in the North East, especially in the technology sectors, because there is the track record um, of companies such as myself who've been trading for six years now, um, who know what they're doing. And there's one thing, if you've got a successful digital business in the North East, you're there because you're good, um, not because there's just ample amounts of work and anyone can pick it up. You've, you've survived because you've been the best. Um, so I think it's not so much of a risk for the private sector to do business here. Some of England's most beautiful countryside are only within two or three miles of Middlesbrough and you can probably see just through the trees there all of Teesside laid out with all the old smokestack industries, those that are still there and which made Middlesbrough uh, and uh, the rest of Teesside uh, a pretty affluent place for a while. Um, ICI, British Steel, the docks of Port Clarence, but most of that stuff's now gone. One old bloke said to me last night, uh, there's no jobs on Teesside, but at least the river's clean. Never used to be, it used to be one of the most polluted waterways in Europe, but now uh, the bird life, the wildlife has returned and the place is a lot better for it. If the jobs are going to return, if there's going to be new jobs in Teesside to, to take the place of the old smokestack industry jobs, then there's got to be private sector investment and government investment. Uh, it's worth it. It's worth it to regenerate a town which was once the powerhouse of Britain.